Can you believe that Taylor Swift made Travis Kelsey famous? False. Never heard of him before she started dating him. That's like really, really awesome of her, I think. Really kind of her. I think it's, it's kind of like charity work. Can I tell you why you way. haven't heard of him? Because he's no, extremely famous. Can I tell you why? No one's heard of him. I know. I've been checking on Twitter. No one's heard of him before. It's like crazy. It's Wait, crazy. What? <laughs> what are you talking about right now? He was like a nobody. Are you doing a bit? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I was about to say, if this isn't a bit, I'm done. This episode's over. <laughs> they are an unusual couple, you know. Well, ironically, though, I said that <laughs> I said that in front of my mom and my dad yesterday, and my mom genuinely doesn't know who Travis Kelsey is, and so she was like agreeing with me. She was like, "Yeah, she de- like she definitely made him famous." And um, dad was getting angry. Yeah. I was like, "No, mom, I was kidding. He's like actually a very famous football player." Yeah, and she's like, "Well, I've never heard of him." And I'm like, "That's because you don't watch football." Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, <laughs> it checks out if you have no football literacy. Like my know. dad started to stand up off the couch. <laughs> He was like, if I didn't have daughters, I wouldn't know who Taylor Swift was. Oh, God. Until now, because she's dating Travis Kelsey. And I was like, he might be right. And he also, yeah. I mean, he didn't take you to a concert when you were like 13 or anything, right? Well, that's only because he has daughters. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Fair. But I'm saying, I, I think almost anyone in society knows who Taylor Swift is. Yeah. So. Travis Kelsey, on the other hand, if you don't know you don't of American football, football, you yeah. might not know who he is. But if you do, then you do know who he is, if that makes sense. I would I would argue, bear with me here, I would argue he's he is not the least famous of her exes. I think there's there's I think this Maddie That's, Healy fella is is less famous. <laughs> oh, Joe Alwyn is less famous. Yeah, fair. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he, he just he might be actually one of the more famous. Harry Styles, Jake Gyllenhaal, and then I would put... No, who? no. Hiddleston, Joe, you think Jonas. There's... Think about all the football fans in the world ever. Yep. Okay, now we've got it pinned down to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good point. But, like, not everybody... I don't think not everybody knows who Tom Hiddleston is. That's just people no, who no, watch more people Marvel. No, no, more people know who Tom Hiddleston is than Travis Kelsey. Guaranteed. Okay. Guaranteed. Okay. Yeah. Who else? Let's go down the line. Um, I think Harry Styles is number one. Duh. With ease, right? Duh. I would put Jake Gyllenhaal. I think more people know who Travis Kelsey is than Maddie Healy. I don't know if that's a hot take or not. She also never dated Maddie Healy. I'm just saying there was something. There was a thing. Yeah, there was something that I've I've heard of. Uh, but I while think she you dated a Kennedy. Connor Kennedy. God Almighty. <laughs> what? I just that's crazy. I think she did. <laughs> you know, Travis Kelsey is the thirteenth guy she's dated. 13 publicly right <clears throat> yeah but still didn't she have a thing i'm swear i am forgetting someone big uh um, john mayer yeah that was the one i was forgetting john mayer taylor lautner yeah kelsey's really low on the on the popularity list does it really matter i don't know what. now i want to talk lots of football fans in the world i want to talk about this i want to talk about this because i've been seeing it on my on my tiktok there is a section of Swifties yes. that are in f- clinically insane. I'm a Swifty. What did they do? I'm a Swifty. What did they do? Calvin Harris forgot about him. Oh God, yeah. I publicly claim myself to be a Swifty, but there is a section of insane, insane. Swifties. What have you been seeing? So this guy named Jack Mack, who's like spills the tea on a lot of things, on a mm-hmm. lot of celebrity stuff. I got to go to his TikTok while I stall. He posted a video with two tweets specifically that were wild. Um, one of them the tweets said, on one of them said trigger warning assault. And it says, <laughs> it's a video of Travis Kelsey at practice. Cause he got in a fight in July, him catching a touchdown and talking shit with the defensive back and throwing a punch to his head and them having a fight. And then the tweet goes on to say, I have to read it word for word. It's, t- it's gold. And I, I th- it has to be a bit. I didn't see that. On okay. Twitter, so we yeah, read it to me. The other one is like a massive chart of all the like astrology signs or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they're not a no, fit. No, they are fit. They're incredibly okay. compatible, then, actually. Then let me look. I have a screenshot <laughs> of a tweet that I sent to Jenna to prove they are compatible. I'll find my screenshot. All right, here it is. You go. Um, all right, where the hell is it? This man posts a lot, so I got to really hunt. Okay, okay, here we go. Um, 
Nope, not that one. Her sun sign is his moon sign, and his Venus sign is her Mars sign, and that's a good match. When someone, when someone's moon is the same as someone's sun, that's a really good matchup. For reference, I'm pretty sure Jenna is a Capricorn moon. Mm -hmm. I'm a Capricorn sun. You know how when I speak Spanish, you're like, I don't understand anything <laughs> you just said. That's what's just. That's what you're just. You're Sagittarius happens. sun. Oh, cool. Is that toxic? Um, it could be. Okay. You're you're a double fire sign. You were almost a triple fire. Trigger sign. warning assault. This is from at baseball cap Tay. Oh, we're doxing them. Um, a video from July of Travis Kelsey aggressively punching his teammates during practice. This guy clearly likes to use his fists when he gets angry slash impatient slash agitated. And in all caps, fuck you if you think I don't have a right to be concerned about this human being with Taylor. <laughs> this is the video. All right. So he uh, he literally catches a touchdown and it's and then the guy grabs him after and he throws a punch and then they start pushing each other. Have you watched this person has to like be so unfamiliar with any contact sport? Yeah. They're also wearing pads on their helmets. Yeah, I know. But like it's so normal for athletes to get into scuffs like that. Yeah scuffles and that was just funny to me i think that had to be some sort of bit <laughs> no i that's that looks that's, like a very serious tweet oh my god if it was and a this bit, is the next if one. it was a bit they wouldn't have put an actual trigger warning this is the next one <laughs> since travis kelsey's birth time is not known here is taylor swift's birth chart with kelsey's planets on the outer wheel and then it's just a bunch of stuff and i'm not taking a shot at that because i know that people really get into it uh, it's just like interesting that people tracked all that stuff down yeah it's bizarre, and I think this just goes to show the level of stardom of Taylor Swift because no other artist, I don't think, has a fan base this obsessive. No, like, it's uh, it's a lot. People are, like, just finding out, like, the smallest things. Today, Travis Kelsey's ex-girlfriend made, like, a public statement about how he, like, cheated on her Weird. and, like, how she's, like, wanted to warn Taylor. And she's like, I, I, I wouldn't be a girl's girl if I didn't. My God. As if Taylor Swift didn't write High Infidelity, which is a song about her cheating on somebody. <laughs> anyway, I about had enough of the tea talk for the day. <laughs> no, we have to keep talking about them. How do you, as a football fan first, Swifty second, feel about their relationship? Um, I think it's cool, honestly. I mean, this is no secret. I've been a Travis Kelsey guy for a bit. In last season in the NFL player, this year technically... It's funny because if I go back in time, I wish I could, ready? I wish I could go back in time with you to the Super Bowl when I literally, the first drive, I was saying Travis Kelsey needs to score a touchdown. I have money on Travis Kelsey to score a touchdown because it was Eagles Chiefs in the Super Bowl last mm -hmm. year and uh, the Kelseys were playing each other, the brothers. And I literally, all postseason was like, I have money on Travis Kelsey anytime touchdown because the man's a beast and he scores almost every game. In one and year it's free money. the other for me. And then it's funny because I mentioned Kelsey's name probably weekly to you. And now it's like, who's Travis Kelsey? Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I've <laughs> talked about him probably at nauseum in front of you for weeks before. Not everyone's have I heard you say his name. <laughs> that's scary. But that's yeah. not y'all knew. That's not me. No, that is just that's just kind of scary. Why would I listen to you because talk no, about football even when you talk know? about like uh, stuff I don't care about, sometimes I still act like I'm listening. That's different. You have a very big and expansive brain memory. That's fair. I have limited storage left, so mm -hmm. I got to choose what I retain. It basically would be like if I just ignored whenever you were trying to explain like something from Grey's Anatomy to me or something. I rarely do that. I'm just saying. It's uh Well, it's not that I don't listen to you. It's just that why would I remember the name? Why would I care to make a note down of right, my boyfriend has money on a man named Travis Kelsey. Got it. <laughs> like why would I why why do I care I about mean that? fair, but also you know of Joe Burrow. Well, that's different. <laughs> How? For starters, I learned of his name when he was in college, and you're a much bigger college football player fan than you are NFL. I'll give you that because he did play against Georgia in 2019. Exactly. So that's why. Number yeah. two, he is a quarterback. They're much more easy well, to memorize. Fair. Do you know of, like, Kelsey's backstory at all, Travis? Not in the slightest. Do you want me to tell you about it or no? Go ahead. So he was about to get kicked off of his college football team, Cincinnati, to get into some stuff. Um, Fights? Fights, and I think just like borderline delinquent behavior. You heard it here first. Travis Kelsey um. is a fighter, and he is a delinquent. <laughs> and so his brother Jason is on the team, and he just basically convinced the coaches to like have him back. Uh -huh. um, and he came back, balled out, and then that's how he got drafted in the NFL. But his brother Jason, they have a podcast. His brother Jason pretty much shaved his career. I like his brother. Yeah, I do too. I know and he so, wears 87 because of his brother. Yeah, 
And so um, he kind of saved him there. And <clears throat> now Travis Kelsey's been in the league for a while, a while now. He's got a chance to go down as the best tight end ever over Gronk. Uh, over, I've heard that I'm, name a lot. I mean, yeah. I recognize I, that I name like Kelsey Gronk. a lot. Yeah. I recognize that name. I've heard you say that name many a time. It's just weird. That you, I wonder why you haven't heard Kelsey then. Maybe because Gronk is a more memorable name than Kelsey. Kelsey's like, I hear Kelsey, I think of a girl I met in middle school. Mm. You know? But yeah. if I hear Gronk, I'm like, the guy from Emperor's New Groove? Like, what are you saying <laughs> to me right now? Yeah, Kronk would be that fella. I know, but it's close. It rhymed. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, as a football fan, I think it is funny how many people, like, care all of a sudden just because of who's dating Travis Kelsey. Did you um, see that, like, the... And also, I have been sort of fed up with the cheese lately just because they've... I was literally enraged you were with me i was enraged at the chiefs when they beat the Bengals last year in the afc championship right sorry by the way our normal listeners probably don't give a fuck about anything we've talked about so far well but... they do because it <laughs> honestly if anyone that's left we probably have a solid amount of swifties that listen to this podcast and they're probably like oh okay mm-hmm. good to know well, Travis Kelsey was talking shit about Joe Burrow after the <gasps> game, and it pissed me off bad. Right. I remember you were upset about that game, mm-hmm. but I only remember it because Joe Burrow was in the game. Yeah. And I just, I think I just have, I mean, I have a man crush on Burrow. A lot of people do. And I just want him to win because of his confidence. And he's he was so awesome in college. He just looks like so. a sweet boy. Um, but now Travis Kelsey's dating Taylor Swift. So. so now it's like, on top of the fact that I already don't want the Chiefs to win every year. Like, I have nothing against Mahomes. They get under my skin in the playoffs. Um, have, but now we have the added thing of like all the Swifties wanting the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl, and it's just like I will be the bad guy. I will be I, if it's Bengals Chiefs AFC Championship, I'm sticking with Joe. That's fine. Joey B. Taylor and if Swift. It, and frankly, Taylor Swift doesn't even like the Chiefs. No, I know. And if it's Eagles, if it's a rematch, if it's Eagles Chiefs, I want the Eagles to win. I Taylor want Hurts Swift to get a ring. Wearing, I want the dogs to get a ring. Taylor would be wearing Eagles <laughs> merch straight up. And I want uh uh. Jason to get another ring because he already has one, but I don't want to get another one. Here's what I think about them dating. Multiple things. We'll start at the beginning. Number one, I think they're a good matchup personality wise. If you look at videos of him dancing, like when he makes touchdowns and stuff, he's a very goofy, fun, lighthearted person. Exercise gives you endorphins. So I'm just assuming he's a happy guy. He looks like a happy guy. And if you look at like clips of Taylor dancing at like award shows or whatever, they just have the same energy. Mm-hmm. Also, I think it's very cool and important that he is incredibly successful in a field that is just so completely and far different from Taylor Swift's. If you look at her dating history, she dates very artistic guys, either music guys or movie guys. We have Harry Styles, Matty Healy, music guys, Joe Alwyn, Jake Gyllenhaal, movie guys like she needs to stop doing that because when you're Taylor Swift and you're that successful, I have something to say when you're done. When you're Taylor Swift and you're that successful in your field, the odds of like being with somebody else who is also in that general field and them not ever feeling insecure or intimidated by your success is slim to none. So the fact that she can is now with somebody who's not in her field at all and will not feel intimidated by her success, I think is important for her. The point I want to make is I don't really th- – I think it's bizarre that society cares so much. Like, I don't care who Taylor Swift dates, but well, I don't care who anyone that's not me dates, really, unless they're, like, a close friend because it doesn't really have – it's just weird. It's, like – it's real life, and I think people view it as, like, a reality TV show. That's fair. And it's just weird to me to get too invested in there's, these things. There's a lot of Swifties that get far too invested, mm-hmm. but then there's, like, me who – is mostly just like consuming what other people are saying, you know, via Twitter or TikTok or whatever. And Taylor Swift is just the people's princess. So I just like to see her happy. And she seemed incredibly happy at the game. That's another reason why a lot of the Swifties are like kind of getting really obsessed with this because this is like the happiest we've seen Taylor. And like this is like the most we've seen her have fun publicly in a long time. Like she never leaves her house like ever unless it's for a concert or an award show. Mm Mm-hmm. So this is like the first thing she's done in a really, really long time where she's just like a normal human Mm -hmm. and she seemed to be having a lot of fun Yeah, and she deserves to have fun and we just want her to be happy. Fair, fair. She was able to drive around in a convertible with him. She, in her documentary, like 
talked about how she has to only she can only get into cars or buy cars with bulletproof glass windows because like she's like terrified of go- going anywhere because mm-hmm. it's like not safe but now she feels comfortable enough to ride around in a convertible proud that's progress chris yeah again i have nothing much else to add to this <laughs> um, i'm trying to think um oh last thing i think it's cute that um she is an eagles fan mm-hmm. and then like you know that we have the whole like the mom is both her sons are chiefs and eagles and it's just cute yeah it's just cute it's a cute nice and fun and light relationship and if it doesn't go anywhere, that's fine. I just want her to have fun. If they end up getting married, that's also fine. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. They'd have really tall and athletic babies. Fair. Fair enough. Um, we really... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to talk about. Um, update <laughs> the people on your team. I don't even want to talk about that right now. I want to talk about something else first. You have... Oh, Chris. I want to talk about something first, and then we'll save that for the end. Okay. So... Saw? Yeah, I think it's time to play a game. Okay. Yeah. We're seeing Saw X this week. Very exciting stuff. The marketing for Saw has actually been super impressive. Mm-hmm. The AMC rip ripoff ad was good. They've been like it taking was, over Twitter accounts. The doll went to like Las Vegas. It was in the back of a news did video. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Just like <laughs> I, I did see that. I don't think that was That's planned for so the news. So funny. Yeah. Um I am very excited for this movie. And it's my most anticipated for the rest of this calendar year. I have what two days left until I watch it. So, not the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This is not news to you. Heartbreaking. Why would Why would it be that over soul Solix? crushing? Why would Continue. it be that over Solex though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can still look forward to it though. I, of course, I'm looking forward to it. It's just not my number one most anticipated. That's fine. Um, I rewatched Saw last night in my in my movie room at my home with all the lights off. The LED lights I keep on the back of my TV have completely lost their um, stick, and so they weren't even on. They were on the floor. Damn. And so I was like, okay, you I'm gotta not. get like clips. I do, and so I turned them off and I watched it 4K, Steelbook, watched it, damn good. And I forget, I forgot some of the ins and outs of the movie. Mm-hmm. Specifically, no spoilers. Specifically, the the role of the character Zepp. I'll just say that much. I also forgot, you know, Detective uh, Tarp, I believe his name is? Yeah. Played by Danny Glover. I forgot some of the reveals that happened with his character. Yeah. And I forgot some of the Adam backstory. Yeah. And to how some of the characters got in and how they knew more than they were letting on early on in the movie. Yeah, that's like, yeah. Yeah. All right. So there was a lot of this movie that I... I, I knew, but then seeing it again, it felt refreshing. Like, for me, I have to watch a movie twice for it to be, like, permanently locked into my memory bank where I can quote it and pull from it and know it, like, the back of my hand. And I feel like I'm there with Saw 1 now. Um, now we go into the sequels. <laughs> and uh, I've seen every Saw movie once. Not looking forward to watching some of them again, frankly. Yeah. Specifically I'm ready to watch... 4, 5, 6, 7, <laughs> and Jigsaw. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to rewatching Saw 2 and Saw 3. Because I like the first three a lot. Um, the rest of them, I are fine. Mm-hmm. They're fine. Mm-hmm. The guy from Gilmore Girls is in it. Yeah, he is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? I, I honestly, I forget. in this movie yeah, or in the movie, it's Strom. Is, I thought that it's was Strom. the other guy. Hoffman is is the other guy. Right. Yeah, Strom You're is right. his name. De- right. Detective Strom. You're right. Yeah. So maybe I know these movies better than I think. You uh, should go, you're just good with the names. Yeah. So Saw one. I will say this. I don't think this is a hot take. I believe the first Saw movie is a modern horror classic. I agree. I feel really bad for people that can't do gore, like at all, because it's such a good movie and they're missing out on it by being like, I just can't do gore, so I just don't watch the Saw movies. I'll say this much. I think anyone can handle the first Saw movie. Yeah. There's three scenes that that might be. Whenever someone says that they're not into gore, I'm always like, I get that. And I hear you for the rest of the Saw movies. However, everything after the first yeah. one is so good, and there's really nothing gory to it except for like maybe someone losing a limb and a really, really, really dirty bathroom. Like other than that, there's and there was like the reverse no, no, spirit trap and stuff like that. But but there's fine. there's three instances in particular that I think of, and honestly, because of the editing, it's not like like in this movie actually, there is no 
signature saw trap where we see like excruciating deaths uh, often in the movie. Like all the other yeah. saws, we see like death after death after death. It's excruciating. It's the, fir- it's the first one. So you, after the first one, they're building up the saw traps to be these bigger and bigger things, and like they're like, okay, we have to take it another step further and another step further. But this one, this, they movie's, didn't- this movie's not about the traps. That's why it's the best song because yeah. it's, it's James Wan and Lee Winnell. It's low budget, and it's a thriller. And this movie, there, there's 30 minutes. It's just developing characters. Well, that's why we get a first- scene with Gordon and his family. We get a scene with Adam and his life at his apartment. Honestly, the first three Saw movies are the best ones because they still focus more on the plot of the movie than just the traps. But mm-hmm. after that, it's kind of more trap focused and they build a plot around the traps. Yeah. So look, Saw, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you haven't seen the first, watch it. For sure. Even if you're iffy about gore and blood because there's a you few moments you can just close your eyes and I promise you it's worth it. But also here's my thing and I don't want to diminish anybody who can't do gore. Or anything in movies, right? That's not my. That's not what I'm trying to say. However, for me, I'm just like uh, it's fake. You know, <laughs> like you, I know it's fake. You know, it's fake blood. We are all aware that no one's actually getting their their foot sawed off. Mm-hmm. We are all aware that it's special effects. So can we not just understand that it's not real, and that it's just like red paint and like move yeah. on a little bit? Yeah. Fair. No offense if you really can't do gore. Like I get people also can't <laughs> do vomit sometimes and that in the movies and that's fine and obviously it's not real vomit, but like just keep telling yourself it's fake and maybe you'll be okay. <laughs> maybe fair you'll make it through. To an extent. Yeah. Fair to an extent. Like For the first Saw movie. For the first Saw movie, yes. Not when like you can see guts everywhere uh, later on yeah. in the movies. I'm talking about like when it's just Mm-hmm. But the first Saw movie, it's fine. Small things. It's you like, see the aftermath of things. You don't actually really see the inaction. Just keep telling the yourself inaction. it's fake. It's not real. And you'll be fine. Um, yeah, fair. So Saw X comes out. It's a prequel. And it comes out. And I believe it takes place between one and two. I'm very excited. Um, very pumped about that. Comes out. We'll. I'll have a review. I'll have a ranking on my channel and all that. It'll be fun. Um, other than that, movie-wise, we're kind of in a lull still. But October has a lot of promise. Looking forward Paw to some Patrol. things. That comes out this weekend too. I heard it had 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. No, oh, I didn't, and I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> um, October has the Taylor Swift movie. Mm. Mm-hmm. Isn't there also an Exorcist movie? Mm-hmm. Are you gonna watch any of the Exorcist movies? Nope. Why? I don't care. That it looks so bad. The new one looks so bad. I'm not gonna watch the first Exorcist to watch that piece of shit. That's probably gonna stink. That's fair. I'm not going to see the Taylor Swift movie. You just said you were a Swifty. I am. Blasphemy. I don't want to go sit in the theater for three hours. That is fair. Because. I, that is fair. Number one, people. That is fair. They're going to be insufferable. Just be think about it. Yeah. Think about if the theater starts singing over the movie. Which they, they will. will. And number two, um, I don't, I hate to say this, I actually don't. I mean, it is what it is, but I was a, I was able to see the tour in live and in person. Yeah. Um, and number three, this will be on streaming by the end of the year. Yeah. You're making good points. Why would I? And it's probably pretty expensive because it's like a special event thing. Yeah, you're making You're probably really charging good $20 a ticket. I am will not be going. You're making very good points. I think points. it's very smart for people who, were, who weren't able to go in person, which is a lot of people. Um, and it's cool, like, if you're just a big Taylor Swift fan. Like, I know a lot of people probably go more than once. More power to you. I saw it. I will listen to the set list in my car, and I'll be content and watch videos from the concert. That's fair. That's fair. So I won't be going. That's fair. That's just me. Do you want to tell the people about your Teen Wolf experience (laughs) since we last updated them? In the last podcast, if you missed it, me and Chris have been watching Teen Wolf. Mia rewatched him his first time watch, and... When you guys last saw him, he was halfway through the the season of 3B. And he did not know what awaited him at the end of 3B. And we're going to talk about that. If you are watching Teen Wolf with us and you like don't want spoilers for the ending of 3B, stop listening. Because we're just going to talk about spoilers. We're going to have but chapters on this episode so you can skip to the next chapter. Yeah, the show has been out for like almost 10 years. So, sorry. We're going to talk about spoilers. If you don't care, Chris, take the floor. Tell him about what I happened to you. Water. <laughs> he had an experience, you guys. So, <clears throat> in the penultimate episode of season three, um, <laughs> what? Speak. Um, unfortunately, 
we uh, we lost somebody. Yeah. And it hurts me to talk about right now. Who, it's, did, it's, who did we lose? It's been a sensitive topic for me. It's tainted my um, what drive to want to watch the show any further, frankly. I'm going to. I've kind of slowed down, though. Um, we lost Allison Argent. Chris's favorite <laughs> character. Yeah. Guys, it was really sad to watch Chris watch that. I was like sitting behind him and I, I just knew. Me and Jenna had been texting this entire time, Chris. Since ep one? Since episode one of the Since show. Since I said she was my favorite. When you were like, <laughs> I like Allison, she's really pretty. I texted Jenna. I said, Jenna, we have a problem. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and I was like, he has no, he has no clue. There's a scene that happens um, in that episode before they all go to like where the Oni are and where the final fight is. It's between Allison and her dad. Mm -hmm. And they're like, say she's like saying, I love you before. Mm -hmm. And she, he like kisses her on the forehead. Mm -hmm. When I watched that show for the first time and that scene happened, I texted Jenna. I was like, now what's this? Because what does this mean? Yeah. Because this is giving bad vibes, bad energy. One of them's one of them. I leaving. just assumed they were riding the wrongs. So. One of them's going, <laughs> and I don't. I could tell by that scene when we watched that scene, and you didn't like you didn't blink at it. I texted Jenna. I was like, Jenna, we're good. He can't. He doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't suspect a thing. <laughs> That's what made it so painful. Um, I just I. I don't know. I don't know if it was necessary. And honestly. If you have seen ahead, I'm holding on to hope she comes back. So if she comes back, please don't comment down below if she comes back. Yeah. Um, that'd be awful. But even if it's just in like a vision, because if I see her on my screen again, <laughs> it might get ugly. <laughs> ugly? <laughs> Not, no, like I might start crying again Aww. because I did cry when she died because of the yeah, way guys. in which she died. If you don't know. Um, Dude, it's, it's like it's a brutal, it's, brutal death. I love Scott and um, Allison together. Yeah. And I've always been like thinking they would, oh, they might go through ups and downs throughout the show. By the end of it, they'll be together happily. Yeah. <laughs> like he's watching season three when Scott's with Kira and Isaac is with Allison and he's like, no. Yeah. They're, I'm not they're feeling endgame. it really. They're end game. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm sitting back here. I'm like, yep. I want to be an end game. <laughs> and so essentially what happens is. Allison, Isaac, everyone, they're fighting the... Uh, Oni. Yeah, the Oni, Uni. I don't know. I called them Uni, but they're Oni. And um, she's slaying, honestly, with yeah. her arrows. And she takes one of them out with, like, the silver mm -hmm. tip. And then she gets stabbed in the stomach. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, immediately, I sat up. You were like, no. Yeah, because I didn't you believe like, it. I was like, it's a no. fake out. It's a fake out. Because it's <laughs> MCU. It's all... I didn't believe it. This show has brought people back. And I was like, no. No, and then like, and then she like so, falls down into Scott's arms, and you're like, "Oh fuck no!" And I'm just back here like this with my phone recording. And then I started crying because she was like pouring her heart out to him, and I, I don't, I've only watched the scene once, once. Do you want to rewatch it? Maybe not now. <laughs> One time, and the dialogue I did pick up was she was like, "It's okay, it's like perfect, like I'm in the arms, like my first love," and That's I was like, "Exactly word for word what she says." I'm in I denial. Once, but it sounds a little something like this. It recites it word for word. And um. It was literally just the most try. I started crying. I was it's literally so, like, what? All of it combined is so god awful, right? Yeah. Being in the arms of her first love. And she's like, I, lo I love you, Scott. Yeah. There's blood coming out of her mouth. And then the camera sh goes to Isaac, who's like sitting far away. And oh, he yeah. can't do anything. <laughs> he loves her, uh -huh. but he can't do anything uh -huh. right now because sh it's, not for it's not for him. It's not for him to be there. It's and he just, there's nothing he can do. You were never mine to lose. Enough. <laughs> Enough out of you. <laughs> Enough. It was uh, brutal and honestly. And then when she's like, you have to tell my dad. Oh, you know what that Enough. is? You know exactly what that is? What? It's Les Mis when that girl is dying in Marius' arms mm -hmm. and they're singing and she's like, and rain will make. And she doesn't finish. So the Marius has to be like, and rain will make. Flowers <laughs> grow. He has to finish for her. <sighs> it's really bad. And frankly, I haven't been hit like by a fictional death as hard because it was the most out of left field to me that I've ever seen. Ever. Yeah. I knew Tony Stark was going to die when Strange went one. It's like, yeah. Rip. It was yeah. just a matter of time. And then when he said, I am Iron Man, you knew. Literally, she got stabbed in the stomach, and I was like, oh, Teen Wolf's faked us out how many times now? I. 
10, 20, you, you were like, oh, they don't know this dead. Like, at the end of season one, uh, I was like, he's dead, right, Peter? Yeah. And you were like, yeah. At the end of season one, Peter, like... Peter and Kate both die. <laughs> And, and they're Chris both back like, now. Chris is like, well, they're going to come back. And I said, I was like, no, they don't bring people back in Team Wolf except for like one person. And I was indicating Peter, even though they do bring back Kate. But I was saying that preemptively because when we got to Allison's death, I didn't want you to either do you know what you did with fuck, Natasha. By the way? I didn't want you to do what you did with Natasha in her death when it happened in the movie. And I looked at you and I was like, how are you not crying right now? And you were like, she's not dead. You literally said that to me in the movie theater. I know. And you I, like didn't believe that she was dead. I was like, okay. After this, I started saying that for uh, for Allison. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, we have not seen. I really, it fucking rubs me the wrong way that we never saw like anything after that. Nothing after that. It's weird to me. Are you forgetting it, it's, the scene where Scott cries in his mother's arms? Are you forgetting about that? I'm talking about with her body disposal. Oh well, yeah, but you're like not supposed to. Why would we see them dispose of her body? That's was like, there a weird funeral? Did I miss something? um probably i might have missed it i think it was off screen okay um look here's the deal or it also probably happened like two weeks ago i want to i want to <laughs> say this i think you were gas i think you lied to me when i swear to god i swear to god at some point in this show season one or two i was like there's a team wolf movie right and you were like yeah and um i was like and like everyone's in it and you're like yeah everyone's in it she's not in it you lied you're a liar and the truth is not in you so thank you for that scumbag Uh, all right so congrats you were like allison's in it and so scott and derek and i think you said like oh yeah styles in it or whatever no well well, you never said style you said styles is not in in a lot apparently he's isaac but yeah you i'm (laughs) what do you want from me i don't know huh anyway um I'm sick. But also, Isaac is now out of the show, so it's really sad. It's really inconvenient and unfortunate for the show that they killed off Allison and Isaac left, and season four is the worst season. Because not only is it just like the I worst. Look miserable right now. It's not only is it just like kind of the worst season, but also you really feel their, the lack of them being there. So it's hard. However, Chris Argent did pull up in the last episode, and that added a needed spark and for he me. And slays. Yeah, just having the original cast around for me is nice. It's like. I don't want the show to lose. I hope it doesn't like fizzle out for me. I'll always it love doesn't. like one through three loved. Dude, six A is a really I think good I, season. I think I got to push through four. It's unfortunate timing right now. Literally can't like can't watch it much for multiple reasons. Number one, Saw, Saw rewatch. Number two, Loki rewatch next week. Number three, you're in pain. Yeah, I'm warning. And then we've got Ahsoka two eps left. Uh, Saturday is like football day for me, so He's I will busy. I will get through it. However. Well, now you understand why I took like literally months off from watching Teen Wolf when I finished season three for the first time. Fair enough. You made fun of me for <clears> it, and I'm like, he doesn't get it. You, but you don't took like understand. a full ass month. I, I waited like, a day or two. I know to I watch. took like three months off. Like, that is problematic. Jenna like f- like had to force me to watch season four, yeah. and she had to like help me get through season four because yeah. when I started rewatch when I started getting back into it, I was like, Jenna, this sucks. I'm kind of crushing it. I only have eight. There's twelve in season four, right? I have eight episodes left. That's doable in a day if I dedicate a day to it. Uh, we'll get through season four. No, you'll definitely get through it. I'm not we, stressed at all for you. The reason is we have to finish Teen Wolf for the by con. when? October Announcement. October 26th. We're going to a con, baby. I dropped my shift from work on the 26th so we can go Nice on that Thursday. If we want to go to the Tyler Posey's concert. Oh, shit. That'd be sick. Now, here's the deal. We're going to a Teen Wolf Con, and it's in Georgia. Because apparently Georgia just has the best cons. Stranger it's Things Con, J- Teen Wolf Con that had that Vampire Diaries Con. That's what happens Diaries when everything's filmed in Atlanta. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. We need a Cobra Kai Con. They might do that at one point. They could. A reunion or just like, yeah, just make a Cobra Kai Con. I would be there. Anyway, um, we're going to that, and it's in October. It's a month from today. Shut up. One month from today it starts. So okay, I have a month have, to finish. They have a whole month left to announce Daniel Sharman. Yeah, that's the thing. Here's who's been announced. Tyler Posey. I'm going to name characters. You can go. Okay. okay. We got Derek, Scott, Lydia, Styles' dad. Mm-hmm. We have Peter. Uh-huh. We have Chris Argent. Yes. Liam. Yeah, he's who, new. He's new to met. me, but yes. Um, Mason, who's... New to me, right? New to you. Yeah. Um, Coach. Coach. Yeah. Bobby Finstock. They, they also recently they <laughs> recently guy. announced the teacher is going. That guy. You know, the teacher. The teacher with like the glasses that yeah. got killed. Okay, yeah. And then 
they're announcing someone new on the face in the face jackson jackson's going yeah. if crystal reed goes i'm that would be i, I don't know i'd be kind of shy i would her. literally i would i would make i would show her the video of you crying over her death. oh jesus <laughs> i don't know i i I'm not my thing is with shows like I don't know her personality at all as an actress because I don't watch She's interviews. Nice. I don't watch interviews until I finish the show. That's my rule. She has to be a lovely girl. She dated yeah. Daniel Sharman. I, so. I think she is. So I, I hope she's not like weird out by the fact that I love her character. Chris, no one. If any, if anybody's going to a con for a show that they're in, they yeah. are fully where the people are going to love their character. Fair. She, she's my favorite. And like, honestly, that's kind of empowering. Yeah. A woman is my favorite. Slay like, and a badass. brunette. Yeah. Proud of you for that one. Yeah, it is. It's about um, time you started liking brunettes. True. I like... We got some newbies in the show, and her name is Malia. Malia's also going. Malia's going. Yeah, I forgot about oh, that. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, then th- a lot of people are going. Oh, and then there's someone I haven't been introduced to, but it's Tyler Posey's birth father, I think. Yeah, he was a doctor in the Eichen House, like... He actually show, was? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or maybe... Is the Eichen House back, done? We I was go back say, to the Eichen House okay, at some cool. point, so... Um, is the mother going? Mother McCall. Yes, Melissa See, is the going. The whole cast is going except, except for... Except for our favorites. <laughs> and Dylan O'Brien, but word on the street is he doesn't He do never cons. goes to cons, ever. What if he did pull up, though? I'm just saying. He would never. There's no need to even theorize it because he would never do what that. What if he did? He would not do it's it. It's Beacon Hills reunion. With a gun to his head, he wouldn't do it. <laughs> I don't know him well, but imagine if he did. That would be really cool, but he's not going to do it. <laughs> oh, man. I think Daniel Sharman is in the folds. I think, I think it could happen. He came to God be Vampire Diary or uh, the originals thing. I know he did. He went to a Teen, a teen Wolf Con last year in North Carolina. Anything's possible, but we are going to that. And Cam, you're like media for it, right? Yeah, I got uh, the news today that I get a media pass for it. It's basically so you have to. to go all four days. I don't have to. Okay, because I can't go Saturday. That's the only thing. <gasps> um, I forgot about that. Yeah. Eh, we'll see what happens but i mean i don't know what time is your game on that 3 30 in the afternoon damn uh, yeah. we could go till two potentially we could definitely when go does till it two. start probably like 10 yeah potentially it's um like plenty of time to meet like one person yeah we'll, we'll we'll scope it out because it's not far from here no and um i'll drive we'll see what's up we'll, we'll play it by ear that's what i always say with things play it by ear um but very exciting stuff i actually love teen wolf and i frankly love tv right now i've watched so much tv lately like tv greater than movies i really this year. am excited for you and to finish teen wolf because if you if we finish teen wolf before the con we will we have to then it's still fall slash spooky season when we're going to start the vampire diaries and the vampire diaries is such an easier show to follow than teen wolf it's like actually insane <laughs> i've been re-watching it because i was bored and got an edit on my for you page so i felt like it and it's just geez, sorry that was such a loud <laughs> yeah. door slam it's just so much easier to follow mm-hmm. so much easier i think it's because the vampire diaries is a cw show mm-hmm. and teen wolf is an mtv show i don't yeah. know what that has to do with it but i feel like even just saying that explains the difference <laughs> in a way i think it does like it the, oh my god the vampire diaries is just there's a lot that happens in the vampire diaries yeah. but it's so much more coherent mm-hmm. and like feasible and comprehensible yeah than Teen Wolf. So MTV, I think MTV making making TV is like actual TV is weird. They usually do like reality. I do remember that Teen Wolf came on it though, and it was always weird to me. Yeah, that it came on that. So weird. I'm curious to see what you like better, Teen Wolf or The Vampire Diaries. I think you'll probably end up liking Teen Wolf more just because I don't think you're gonna have an Allison in. The, and it's not just Allison. Like I really like uh, Styles. I mean, I really like a lot of the characters. I don't think that um like any character from that vampire diary show can really i think you'll really like paul know. wesley paul wesley's is that character Stephen? yeah yeah potentially what about damon i think you like damon the thing is is that the vampire diaries is actually the only show to ever successfully do a love triangle mm-hmm. like you have twilight where it's like yeah some people could be team jacob but be serious and then there's like the summer i turned pretty where it's pretty much mostly team conrad and then what else has love triangles that i'm blanking on if, I don't even know, to be honest. The Hunger with you. Games. Yeah. No one in the right minds is Team Gale, mm-hmm. right? But then you have the Vampire Diaries, and like literally There's depending on the season, it you could really either be Team Stefan or Team Damon. And, and like, is there a love triangle through the entirety of the show? Yes and no. Okay. Go I might have to take a buffer though. Um, <gasps> no, don't 
don't say that to because me. that would just be unfair in our deal where like you get a show i get a show but chris you don't have any spooky time shows if i don't show you vampire diaries i want to watch haunting of hill house it's eight episodes we can okay. do it with the track okay i want to watch it in october okay yeah and i want to watch horror movies in october like i have a list i want to watch can some paranormal activity i want to watch um can we still do the vampire diaries this year yes. though? yes because if we don't do it this year you're gonna make me wait till next october to show it to you why the hell would i have to watch this show in october because it's spooky <laughs> did every episode come out in the month of october no exactly it's not all just because it's vampire you can watch twilight whenever Pretty you sure want it's you like watch the twilight month of, in february it's sent like the month of august exactly actually, so. exactly like they start going back to school so no need to have to watch force if you force something to watch i mean i might take teen wolf to the buzzer what if i finish it october 20th you know that's fine we'll see uh, i will kick it into high gear after the loki rewatch for sure with teen wolf but squeeze an episode here and there as as needed um but, but i've been watching a lot of tv ahsoka has been fire mm -hmm. loki comes back next week loki That's comes crazy. back next week on, we probably we're going to be talking about that on the on podcast travis kelsey's birthday mind you october 5th oh cool glad you knew that <laughs> um <laughs> uh yeah loki we'll, we'll probably do i'm gonna just actually we are doing this because i want to have segment i don't do reviews on my channel so we're gonna have a loki episode review every week Slay. now our podcast drops on wednesday and loki episodes drop on thursday so well that's actually <laughs> probably good though because that gives okay. people at least a week to yeah, watch fair, it fair so we don't have to be like we don't have to worry about spoiling it like the day after that it's is actually true. for the better that's me when my brain is fair. so big and we'll have a chapter for it um ahsoka ends next week and i might talk about it on here we might talk about it on here yeah, next we can week talk about it but here. anyway that was a, a good episode I think, episode of the podcast. Good ep. We're going to watch Saw tonight, in case anybody was wondering. And we're going to watch Soka episode 7 and Saw 2 and 3. Oh, that comes out tonight? 9. Damn. Not damn. We got to watch it. I know. I just forgot. To be fair, I'm traumatized from the last time we watched Soka. Last time we watched Soka, there was a cockroach in my room that Chris failed to kill. Oh, shit. And then we had to move a bunch of shit around my room, oh, and God. then he eventually killed it. I killed it, though. Did I not? Is it dead? eventually yeah it was really bad for me i have a chronic fear of cockroaches oh i forgot to turn on the led light damn damn my bad my bad i mean we have to scratch this whole thing i think yeah. you're right thanks guys no i'm kidding <laughs> um but i'll say this if you're watching hit the like button on youtube and subscribe on youtube and also drop some comments on YouTube. comment down below uh, your condolences for Chris and his extreme loss. If you need a comparison to how he felt during Allison's death, this was his Eddie Munson. Okay? That is how I can put it into perspective for you. <laughs> and uh, just like Cam, I'm delusional that she's coming back. Yeah, so. he literally, like the day after she died, he was like, you know, I think I understand your delusions now about Eddie. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. TBH, I Eddie could legit come back though. Yeah, I know. Why? What? What's the commonality between the two? I'm actually planning. We on never money. saw anything we after. We never saw the bodies. <laughs> yeah, it's like the number one rule in fiction, in um, media. I've actually been planning on making a YouTube video of like Eddie Munson fan theories on how he's coming back. Eddie, 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 Eddie. Yeah, yeah. Because I realize Eddie I only Munson, have like Eddie four. Munson. Can you stop? I only have like four Stranger Things YouTube videos on my channel, which is like crazy. That's nuts. Because I just know a lot about Stranger Things. Yeah. I should talk about it more, but I just don't. You should. I have a plethora. I know. I looked at them the other day. What about it? I was just like, you just are just good at making Stranger Things videos. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> My little shy boy, he said, thank you. I also want to say that we are going to start doing tier lists at some point on this podcast. Yeah. Sounds like a pain in my ass to edit, though, but it's fine. And I also want to say that I want to start doing commentary tracks on my YouTube channel, Patreon. Okay. I just wanted to say that. That's all I got. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. That's my Forrest Gump impression. Mm. Interesting. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. <laughs> um, pray for Chris and the loss of his recent girlfriend. Um, we don't talk about it. But other than that, nope, that's my YouTube outro. I do that every time. Um, until next time, stay unusual. Stay unusual. And from that day on, if I was going somewhere... I was running. Very good. <laughs>